Hi, my name is Lindsay Gamble and I'm the Director of Nursing. And as the Director, I have the privilege of witnessing the nursing team and support staff work together to meet the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs every day. It is Heritage Week that I reflect on the hospital's mission, which was created by the Sisters of Providence. Over the last several months, I have watched the caregivers rise up to the demands of this pandemic with compassion, determination, and strength. They have the ability to treat the whole person, much like the sisters had. This is the mission we continue every day at the bedside. We take care of the mind, the body, and the spirit of all of our patients. And it is this week we celebrate the vision of the Sisters of Providence. I am very proud to be a part of Mercy and to carry out this legacy. Thank you. So in reflecting on mission and how it's done every day, I wanna talk about this whole COVID experience that we just went through. One of the things that was actually just amazing and inspiring for me as a mission leader was to see every colleague recognize the own, their own nobility of their profession within this experience here at the hospital. And, when, and what I mean by that is people who actually and responding to those in most need, we're able to actually look at their profession and say, this is how I'm going to actually save lives. This is how I'm going to make people safe. And from a mission perspective, that was absolutely incredible and inspiring. Hello, I'm Darlene Kuna, the Chief Nursing Officer here at Mercy Medical Center. I've been asked to kind of do a little reflection on what is Heritage Week, what does it mean to me, and what is the Legacy Leader all about? I'd like to actually kind of tell you that it's really about both, right? When I think about the Sisters of Providence and they came, they came over here, they had no blueprint on what to do or how to do it. They just set forth to, to build a legacy, to build a commitment to patient care, to community, to a sense of self, and that's exactly what they did. And when I think about our heritage, it's about our stories, about our families, what they've taught us, what we want to be remembered for. It's really about a love of tradition, and values, the values that Trinity has, those core values that we embody each and every day that make us who we are, that make Trinity, that make Mercy who they are, who we are as a community. My heritage is important to me. It's one that is grounded in faith, grounded in kindness and compassion. The Sisters of Providence held those same traits. And today we celebrate that heritage each and every day when we walk the halls of this hospital. We feel it, it emulates, it is part of who we are. And I'm proud to be here. Good morning. I'm Chaplain David Arfa, and so glad to be invited to share about what uh, the Sisters of Providence mean to me here on this Heritage Week. When I st started working here over two years ago, I had never heard of the Sisters of Providence before. I didn't grow up Catholic, and I didn't realize the vast healthcare infrastructure they built for Western and Central Massachusetts, and I was so inspired. What I did was I went to their biography. And it was really great reading, actually. And I learned how they began in the late 1800s. And they just took in people who were in need. A, a child that had no one to care for. And they would wash his clothes in the river. You know, elders that needed help. And it grew from there. They would just do needlework to raise money. They would bake things to raise money. And they did. And it grew and it grew. And they'd be asking people to help out. And next thing you knew, there were full institutions here throughout our region. Not only hospitals, but orphanages, assisted living facilities, homes for unwed mothers. What an inspiration. What an inspiration that they were able to really bring biblical values to life in the way they did. And not just, you know, in words, but figuring out how do we do this? How do we do it with our lives? And I learned they brought the first scientific nursing program to our area. It said that in 1890, there was only 35 around the country. And then by 1900, 
there was a couple hundred in different regions of the country. They organized the first scientific nursing school for our area, for Western and Central Massachusetts. Uh, during the Depression, they organized the very first nurses' aid program for the whole country. They worked with the Red Cross so it could be replicated because there was a need. Right? There was a need. They saw there was just like more work than they could do. And so they figured out a way to bring in some new volunteers, some new aides that they could train and be part of the hospital. So inspired by that ethic and that work that they're doing, their mission, their sense of mission. I think sometimes like times today, calling, how do we call forth? What does that look like for us? To find ways just to create what we need. You know, and it kept on going through um, uh, the homelessness. When they saw it as an issue, they began, uh, they began with feeding those who were hungry. They worked as advocates in protesting, knowing that it was their obligation to also let the whole community know, the whole nation know, that there are problems that we have that we need to find solutions for. And they kept going building programs, they started bringing health care to the streets because they said it wasn't enough just to have a hospital. How do we build connections with the people in our community that are truly in need that might not even be able to get here? And they did it. They found ways to do it. So inspiring. Hello, my name is Deborah Bizzoli and I'm the president here at Mercy Medical Center. And I'm here to talk about what Heritage Week means to me. I've had the opportunity over the past 10 years to work at two Sisters of Providence hospitals. This has been a gift to me personally to have this opportunity. The first hospital, St. Vincent Hospital in Worcester, Massachusetts, was the first facility and I remember the first day I started and how proud I was to be part of the long-standing heritage of the Sisters of Providence. They had founded this institution many years ago and I felt blessed to have the opportunity. It was there I met a beautiful nun by the name of Sister Mary. Sister Mary was petite, but she was a force and she had beautiful blue eyes. Now at a second Sisters of Providence Hospital, Mercy Medical Center, a second Sister Mary has entered my life. For this I am grateful to know two women who have shaped my thoughts recently and over the past. At Mercy, I've also been blessed with meeting many other Sisters of Providence, in addition to Sister Mary Caritas, who envelop me and the Mercy with their love, respect, and prayers. Sister Kathleen, Sister Ruth, Sister Madeline, along with the other Sisters of Providence, have given back and created a healthcare system and a heritage that was well ahead of its time. Their guiding principle of giving back and caring deeply for any human being, no matter their walk of life or need, resonates with me daily and makes me a better human being and professional during these challenging times leading hospitals. The Sisters of Providence, their heritage, their bravery, their contributions to society serve as a true north for me as a healthcare leader in person. I look forward to the future and the amazing possibilities that we have here at the Mercy to carry on the transforming and healing presence of the Sisters of Providence. It is a gift that I am grateful to have the opportunity to participate each and every day as I help the patients and families walking through the doors of this lovely institution. Amen. Hi. My name is Felix Ortiz. I've been working for the hospital for 45 years, and I'm proud to be part of the heritage and this ha hospital because I'm part of the hospital. And I do delivery for the hospital. And I enjoy every day, every hour, every minute. I meet different kind, different people. They love me, and I love them. Hi, I'm Guy DiStefano, uh, VP of Finance. Stu Rosenberg, Vice President of Operations. Keon Blackledge, Performance Excellence Consultant. 
One of the things about Heritage Week I think is very, very important to all of us is when we look at the legacy leaders who represent all the leadership here at Mercy. Uh, legacy leaders to me is reaching back to the past of who we are and, and what has gone on before us and bringing that forward and carrying those traditions, those ideas, uh, those things that are most important uh, forward. And if we're going to carry out the tradition as leaders, then we got to really take a look at where we were and where we're going in the future and carry on the excellence that was brought forth by the sisters. And I think the foundation laid down by the sisters of compassion and that compassion to care still links with us today, uh, you know, and more than ever, I think today our legacy leaders truly carry on that compassion of care every day and the uh, community that we serve and the work that we do. I'm Janine Gasper, the nurse manager for the emergency department, and I love our mission and values. I think it's at the heart of everything we do here at Mercy. It not only guides our care, but it's who we are. When looking for people to join our team, I give them our core values and I ask them to pick one that speaks to them. And it's my favorite part of every interview is touching people's hearts, knowing that we're building a team that will serve the community and be that transforming healing presence here at Mercy. Hi, I'm Julianne Silverman Bunn and I'm one of the chaplains here at Mercy Medical Center. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I love the work that I do and why I'm here at Mercy and how that embodies the mission. I came here specifically because of the mission and the history. And one of the visits that I had early in my time as a chaplain here was with a gentleman who the doctors were trying to prevent from leaving AMA and he really didn't want to stay. And I asked the translator if we could have a conversation with the patient. And the patient and I talked a little bit, but mostly we prayed. And I held his hand and we talked and prayed through the translator. And what I found at the end of it was the gentleman was willing to stay. And when I asked him why, he said, because you are the first people who have treated me like a person. Every time I've gone to another hospital, I've just been a body in a bed. And here, you see all of me. And that's why I love to work here, and I love the history of this hospital, because it's all about honoring the inherent worth and dignity of every person who comes through our doors. And I think that is a mission for any hospital, that we should be in the caring business and caring for all people, but most especially those who have no one else to care. Hi, I'm Lauren McGrath. I'm one of the physical therapists here at uh, Mercy Medical Center in inpatient rehab. Um, I'm super grateful and feel very privileged to work in the Springfield community. We're working with folks who are from Springfield, who love Springfield, um, and really need advocates and support in order to return to the lives that they've been living before. So I'm, I'm so glad and privileged and um, and happy to be part of this team that works so hard with people um, to, to help them meet their goals and to live their lives and, and return back to what's important to them. Okay, hi, my name is Magdalene Boso. They call me Maggie. My current role, infection control, infection prevention, and COVID spelled a lot of work for infection prevention, infection control. I was fortunate, I guess, and blessed to be in this role during this time, and it helped me live out some of the mission uh, in this role. I had the blessing and the opportunity to go out to our jail system, the Hamden um, Correction Center, and I got to spend actually a couple weeks with them, a few days here and there with different groups of people, and help them understand really what COVID is all about, and that outreach truly wasn't necessarily people that we would see on a daily basis. And I was truly uh, glad that that outreach or they had reached out to me to go to them in that capacity. And I can say that by the time I was all said and done, there was a lot of understanding and the fear because COVID has come with a lot of information, but then also brought a lot of fear with it because the information that is out there isn't necessarily all correct and people don't know how to decipher it to sort of see about what is useful and what isn't. 
So to the average person, it just presents a lot of overwhelming information and a lot of fear. And I was very glad to have been available to provide my support and services and understanding to people who don't necessarily have first-hand knowledge of what healthcare is. Hi, my name is Margaret and I currently work as the Executive Assistant to the President of Mercy Hospital. I joined the health system 18 years ago, working for Brightside for Families and Children in the Administrative Office. At that time, Brightside had a residential treatment center for youth. Some of the children had no family contact remaining, so Brightside became their home. So it was, in a way, a modern form of the orphanage that the Sisters of Providence had originally founded. Most of the work at Brightside was therapeutic, treatment related to healing the mind and soul, trying to teach these children about forming positive relationships and how to take care of themselves. I think the legacy of the Sisters is active in the way we continue to try to balance healing the whole person, mind, body, and soul. In the hospital setting, our caregivers are faced with helping patients physically as well as mentally with challenges that are very, very unique to today's world. It is amazing to realize how much the sisters did with so very little. Today, we get annoyed if we have a difficult commute into the office. Well, these women worked with no cell phones, no computers, no internet connecting them to everything in an instant. Being of service to others is a gift and it is a privilege to continue the work that these women began so many years ago. What mission means to me is uh, spiritual care. Um, care represents uh, physical, mental, and obviously spiritual. And what the nuns brought to us with their mission was a lot of spiritual care. And um, it doesn't end just with the, the physical and the mental aspects, but spiritual is so, so uh, embodied in what we do and with our patients and how we treat our patients. And I just want to instill that to our patients and not forget our nuns before us and, and how they brought that spiritual care to us. When we think about the mission of Mercy Medical Center, we think about the, the tradition that uh, began many uh, years ago with the Sisters of Providence and, and really caring for the sickest in the community, the elderly, the poor, the children, and continuing on that, that, that tradition of, of caring for those individuals in a compassionate way. Um, you know, providing the, the best care possible, the most efficient care possible, and, and you know, healing and providing a healing component to this, this community. My name is Michelle Strott. I've been with Trinity Health of New England for about 15 years now. Um, I actually came here prior to working here and delivered my children here. And I had a really great experience with the nursing and the staff, and that made me realize um, that the um, core values that they showed and how they took care of me in my unique situation when I delivered my daughter made me think this is probably a really good place to work. At the time I was working in Boston but I needed to be closer to home. I applied and 15 years later I'm still here. I can tell you working in human resources um, as an HR generalist you get to see a lot of the different mission based things that the employees do. You get stories all the time about how people care for their patients and um, the special unique ways people go out of their way to carry on the mission, going above and beyond for people, making people feel special and welcome all the time. And I think that's why I've stayed so long is because I enjoy working with the staff here who continue to carry on that mission and the legacy and how they treat everyone, not just their patients, but their coworkers, their peers. Um, anyone who comes to this hospital, you hear, I wanna go back to Mercy not because they need another procedure, but of course they always hear they have great care here and people take good care of them. So I'm glad to be working here. I hope to carry on the mission and the core values that they have here. And I hope that um, everyone else enjoys working here at Mercy as well and enjoys this week for the heritage and we relive the whole history of Trinity. My name is Molly Sullivan. I'm a mental health therapist with the Healthcare for the Homeless program here at Mercy. And Heritage Week to me really is a time to honor those that have walked before us. And I think I speak for the rest of my colleagues in the Healthcare for the Homeless program when I say we feel we've always had a special connection to the Sisters of Providence, whether it be the sisters that came to this area 100 years ago or the sisters who started our Healthcare for the Homeless program almost 40 years ago now. So whether that be Sister Caritas, Sister Sangha, um, Sister Julie Crane, we feel that we truly are carrying on their legacy in the work that we do. 
We um, service those that are sick, that are homeless, that are poor. We're that transforming healing presence in the community. Um, and I think we do, we carry on that legacy that they started over a hundred years ago and we get to continue to do that every day. So we view Heritage Week as a way to honor them and the work that they laid out for us to continue to do. Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Roos and I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Mercy Medical Center. And when I think of Heritage Week, I'm called to remember the incredible legacy of the Sisters of Providence who always transformed how they delivered care to meet the community's needs. I recall the images of the sisters rowing across from South Hadley in a boat to the streets of Holyoke to minister to children who were left orphaned by the industrial mills back in the late 1800s. I'm inspired by the continued commitment and courage and heart that they've shown decade after decade to provide care here in our community. And it calls and inspires me to dedicate myself and proud to be part of Mercy Medical Center who carries on that mission because we're here to be a transforming healing presence in our community and we are the instruments through which healing is enabled and providence is expressed. Join me in celebrating Heritage Week and remembering and being inspired by the mission that we all hold as part of Mercy Medical Center and Affiliates. I'm Cheryl Moriarty. I am the Clinical Quality Improvement Coordinator for Rehab Services here at Mercy Hospital. Heritage Week is a week where we celebrate our mission and the legacy of the Sisters of Providence. For our mission, it's really um, about transforming lives in Pioneer Valley uh, and being a healing presence in the community. In rehab services, we work with a lot of individuals whose lives have been interrupted through disability or illness. So it's with great gratitude the team I work with work with patients and their support systems and families to get them back to the community and being able to do what they did before. It's invigorating, it's exciting, and it's very rewarding. That leads itself back to a celebration um, of our mission and of Heritage Week. Hi, this is Vikram Sandhi. I'm the Chief of uh, Medicine, uh, of Internal Medicine at Mercy Medical Center. Um, I just want to say that during this difficult COVID time, uh, we, we held to our values, core values at Mercy uh, in terms of reverence, uh, we were able to uh, help individually uh, as a team and collectively uh, take care of very sick patients uh, during this time. Uh, the be best part was that uh, nurses and physicians worked together while they were trying to keep themselves safe, uh, take care of these sick patients and uh, made sure that uh, they got uh, transition to the system in a safe manner without any harm to the families or to the patient. Uh, so I'm, I'm honored to be part of Mercy uh, and uh, be part of such a good team which innovates uh, and has the resilience to go through uh, this tough time and yet, uh, yet come out winner on the other side.